Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now this is a broken Dell Vostro PC that I featured in a now deleted YouTube short. 60 seconds just isn't enough time to talk about the transformation I've made to this cheap and broken PC. It all started when I found this system on eBay for about 20 quid. Described as having no power, I quickly discovered that it didn't turn on and there were no signs of life. So began the mission to transform this busted old pre-built into something that would hopefully play a few games. This has a first gen i7-8 60 CPU which is going to struggle in 2024 but the biggest problem aside from the fact it's dead is the 3 gigabytes of RAM and the terrible GeForce 310 graphics card. Now this card will play GTA 5 at 360p with the lowest settings and about 25 FPS so it's not all bad news but apart from this it's not good for much. The 310 is basically an OEM GeForce 210 and you've probably heard of that for all the wrong reasons. The first step was to replace the power supply and it's a shame it's broken because it does have a single six pin power connector for a graphics card which would have come in handy but of course it won't because it's broken so it's sort of irrelevant. To replace it I found an old 500 watt HP Omen unit which not only has all the connectors we need but it will allow us to use a more powerful graphics card. Everything inside this Del Vostro seems to be of standard form factor too so everything can be replaced. Don't you just hate it when you want to upgrade an old pre-built PC and you're met with a silly proprietary and weird shaped PSU or a motherboard with something like 7 pins instead of 24. Our new HP Omen power supply slid right into the space its dead predecessor once sat and another thing I noticed was how clean and tidy this machine was inside. It makes a change from some of the systems I buy which look like the inside of a fairground haunted house, full of cobwebs and other nasty surprises. The scariest thing inside this one was of course the ancient GeForce GPU. 3GB of RAM is also pretty horrific these days, but luckily CEX have some pretty cheap sticks available. I got 16 gigs of the stuff for less than 15 quid. To replace the graphics card, I won an eBay auction for a GTX 980, which set me back another £40, almost half of what some go for with Buy It Now offers. The once higher end 900 series is probably the earliest I'd go these days if I were shopping for a used GPU, because they are still supported by drivers and somewhat capable at the time of this video. All that was left to do was replace the crusty old thermal paste on the CPU and screw what was a very cheap SSD into one or two of the HDD intended holes. After this I installed Windows 10 and it was job done. To be honest the first gen quad core i7 is probably going to hold the aging 980 back in most games but at the price I couldn't resist. Plus we could put another board and CPU combo in here at a later date if we wanted to. So can the resuscitated Vostro play games? Let's find out. Cyberpunk 2077 up first and boy was I hoping with this one. 1080p with the lowest settings and surprisingly we saw 41 FPS with a 1% low of 25 and a 0.1% low of 20. So not as bad as I was anticipating but of course in those busier areas the quad core 8 thread i7 is going to suffer quite a bit. Fortnite next, 1080p with a medium preset, there was some serious stutter going on here, 77 FPS was the average and the game does smooth out a little bit the more you play, but there are still going to be a few frame dips and drops. Still this didn't stop me from wiping out a couple of enemies before one massive in-game stutter got me wiped out. Red Dead Redemption 2, 1080p with the ultra textures, everything else set to low and TAA medium gave us a surprising 51 FPS. These slower paced single player titles are definitely better suited to a system like this. I wouldn't recommend going out and building an i7 first gen system from scratch, but if you can find a cheap PC that needs a little bit of an upgrade, there is certainly still some life left in them. 51 FPS on average here with a 1% low of 38 and a 0.1% low of 36 demonstrates that this game was pretty consistent. Baldur's Gate 3, probably the newest game tested today at 1080p with the low preset and TAA, returns 65 FPS on average with some pretty decent percentile lows as well. I wasn't expecting this one to run as well as it did on this system. I think you're best off sticking to low to account for some of the drops that may be incurred. 
Counter-Strike 2, 1080p with the lowest settings, did suffer a little bit. This does have FSR, which we can enable, but it doesn't really make a difference because the problem here is with the CPU. It's simply too old to handle this one with a consistent plus 60 FPS frame rate, and this can be detrimental to our online gaming experience. I found myself performing even worse than usual with this PC. The Witcher 3 1080p medium preset and TAAU gave us 61 FPS with a 1% low of 38 and a 0.1% low of 20. It's going to be those busier areas like in towns or cities where we'll see the biggest frame drops because again of that processor which is pretty ancient and will struggle in certain titles. GTA 5 is older but it can still put hardware through its paces especially when we turn the settings up. Here we're running at high with FXAA for an average of 65 FPS. Just like before in The Witcher those busier areas and in all games really uh, they will impact the CPU so you may start to see more problems when it comes to those percentile numbers in and around busier in-game cities, towns and settlements. Finally then, it's Forza Horizon 5 1080p with a medium preset and TAA for an average of 57 FPS. I think the low preset would have got us over 60, but this was still more than playable and there were still some areas whereby 60 FPS plus was achieved. The percentile lows do leave a little to be desired. Overall though, well, I'm glad that we've brought this system back from the dead. I hate to see old PCs go to waste, no matter their initial specs. One day, I'm sure we'll swap out the motherboard and CPU for something a little more capable. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one.